Welcome back to the Pick 6 Podcast here at the Bellagio. Stream wall-to-wall coverage with our CBS Sports HQ team of hosts, insiders, and analysts as they tackle the biggest storylines, interview the game's brightest stars, and keep you up to date with the latest betting odds and much more leading up to the best Sunday of the year, Super Bowl 58 here in Las Vegas. All right, boys, we are back. Brady Quinn, Lee J. Dusbel, Will Brenson. Talking quarterbacks. And look, look, this ain't going to be a long conversation. I think we know where the quarterback <laughs> discussion is going to go. Uh, so, Brinson, I'll ask you first. If you're picking – and shout out to Brock Purdy. He was in the MVP conversation long yes, into the season. For sure. And I'm not trying to, to slight him, but let's be real. If, if you combined, like, Sam Darnold and Brock Purdy, I don't know how you would combine them. I don't, like, it, like – even the best traits wouldn't be better than like like Mahomes like or twins. Is that yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they, have, they have four arms. They can throw two passes at once. Oh, okay. <laughs> so All right. So, be uh, there. so uh, let's let's do this. Brady, I'll come to you first. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, Patrick Mahomes or or, or, uh, or Brock Purdy? It's Patrick think? Mahomes for me, Ryan. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> we can talk about the experience, the talent, Hot the take. ability, everything else. <laughs> Uh, it, the reality is, is he is the best quarterback in the game. If he wins this Super Bowl, he's going to be viewed as one of the best all time. Probably should be already viewed that way. Correct. Based on what he's done since he's taken over starting. So, to me, um, I, I just appreciate how his game's developed. Yeah. He's become a guy who can carry a team, can make the special play, to now that realize he doesn't have to. But when called upon, he can and will. Yeah. So, uh, we're very all blessed to be able to watch this, this young man play. And I think he's in for a big day on Sunday. Yeah, it's Patrick Mahomes. I don't even think this is up for a debate. 14 playoff wins. And the kid's not even 30 yet, Brady. And you talked about it, the maturation of Patrick Mahomes, where earlier in his career, he had to put on the cape, right, and had to do it all. And we saw last year, even in that second half, it was almost a shootout between the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, this year he's learned with the championship-type defense that he can just take what the defense is giving him. And me and Brady had this discussion the other day. I think the biggest goal for him is not forcing things down the field. Like, some of his biggest yep. plays we talked about yeah. in the AFC title game was just taking the sack and letting the clock run for 40 seconds. Like, we saw earlier in the season versus Denver Broncos where he struggled in that in that avenue where he would throw the ball down the field and throw interceptions. Well, we've seen the growth the last few weeks in the playoffs, so it's Patrick Mahomes. It's not even up for debate. It's interesting because, you know, when Tom Brady was playing with the Patriots early in his career, you could argue that he was maybe even a game manager. Correct. Um, I also think you could say that the NFL changed the rules for offenses because of Bill Belichick's defense. Well, NFL defenses have changed the way they approach the game because of Patrick Mahomes. Like yeah. the, 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 the rise of the cover two shell, two shell stuff yeah. has which is like almost entirely because of Mahomes and Josh Allen, their ability to push the ball down the field. Yeah. He, he's the Steph Curry of the NFL. For sure. Yeah. I mean, he is. I mean, if you look at, too, the way I think young kids play the game, they're, they're all trying to mimic Patrick Mahomes, the no-look throws, the cross-body throws, the, the things that we were always told, like, that's a cardinal right, sin. You yeah. do not do that. They've opened that up now. And, and I think just it goes to show you, I think, what he's done for this game so far. I have a little kingpin thing going on there. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like – it looks like a bird nested <laughs> at one point in your hair. But, but to your I was point, trying to lay an egg. To your point, Brady, <laughs> do, you, do you think that's a detriment to the game because of no. how he plays? No. I, a lot I, of people said the same thing about Steph Curry. Like, everybody, I, the fundamentals I, I, I have gone the, out the, the window. The detriment is for young quarterbacks coming into the league is that's the expectation or that's the measuring stick. Like, good yeah. luck. Because, I mean, because his first year starting, he was an MVP through 50 touchdowns. Correct. And then he's never really looked back. So, that's the tough part. Yeah. You know, is, is he was put in a perfect situation yep. yeah. to be where he's at now, and, and he's excelled, and he's obviously run with it, but it, it's it, I think it's a desperate to every young quarterback. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we just had DTR up here. Hey, try to be Patrick Mahomes. Hey, try to be the next guy. Good he, luck. Mahomes is basically like two plays away from going to six straight Super Bowls to start his career. Yeah. That's outrageous. Insane. All right, let's talk about wide receivers, the guys that the quarterbacks we throw in the ball to. Uh, we'll start on, on the uh, San Francisco side of things. Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, and we have this conversation every day, I feel like, about who's the most important player on, on that San Francisco offense. Uh, Lejay, I'll ask you. Yeah. How – I mean, we talked about the fit for Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. I don't know what that would look like if he had these playmakers. But how has that helped Brock Purdy in your mind? And, and I, let me ask you, who's the – I think Ayuk has gotten so much better as a route runner, but who's the most effective player in this office for Kyle Shanahan, Ooh. Ayuk or Debo? That's a good question. T- to me, Debo Samuel is the heartbeat of this team, right? We saw coming out in the second half versus the Detroit Lions when they're down by 17, that in-breaking route, and you saw the energy that Debo Samuel had, right? It kind of ignited this team. So I would say Debo's probably more important. I would say Brandon Ayuk is a better pure receiver than him. And w- when you look at Debo, right, and perfect nickname, I know you guys have all seen the movie Friday, like – 
Brady, he makes defenders make business decisions, kind of like Debo in the movie. <laughs> right. Riding around with his bike, everybody's running away. Here comes Debo, here comes Debo. What's these safeties in the NFL make business decisions when Debo catches the ball yeah. over the middle of the field? He turns into a running back. So, to me, Debo Samuel is probably the most important player when you talk about receivers, right? I think Christian McCaffrey overall is the most important player on this team. But Debo Samuel is the most important receiver because he's the heartbeat. He's kind of the tone setter on that offense. I'll quickly say this. Look, I think we will all agree San Francisco has the edge of wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, yes. I love how Brandon Ayuk has continued to develop. And to your point about him being probably the more traditional wide receiver in this offense, you can almost make the case he's a bit more valuable too only because they have so many other versatile players yeah. like Debo because Christian McCaffrey can do a lot. Kittle can do a lot. Yeah. Yushek can do a lot. So because of that, you almost have to have, though, that number one guy you can hang your hat on. Brandon Ayuk has been that. He's really developed himself into that in that big play receiver for him. Yeah. Uh, and so to that point, you know, it doesn't matter which one you want to pick before the other. They have different roles within this offense. I think what it highlights, though, with Debo is the brilliance of Kyle Shanahan is showcased because of his versatility. Well, and I think when you talk about the brilliance of Kyle Shanahan and you talk about the differences between Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, like, let's give credit in the same way Andy Reid deserves credit for it, too, for building around Patrick Mahomes. Kyle Shanahan deserves credit for going and getting these guys specifically designed to complement each other around Brock Purdy. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, and Debo Samuel all do different things. Yeah. I think you know, Ayuk is, again, more of a traditional guy. The other three guys are unicorns when it comes to, like, their position. And But, I mean, all those guys together combine to really form this nucleus of skill position guys that make Brock Purdy the perfect point guard in the offense. Look, you have five eligible guys to throw to, right? Yeah. yeah. You're trying to build your starting five like an NBA team. Each one of those players on NBA team, at least back in the day, yeah. used to have kind of more of a design-specific role. That's what you get within the Kyle Shanahan offense. So who's, the, who's the power forward? Kittle. Kittle, yeah. Kittle, for sure. I mean, however you want to look yeah. at it. Who's, who's, who's small forward sh shooting guard? Uh, I would say... McCaffrey, which is more the point, he's going to yeah. touch the ball yeah. more. Oh, Debo, yeah. okay. I think, is more of the shooting guard. Oh, okay. really? I put Ayuk to me at small forward. Okay. And then you've got your, your bruisers, your big guys, the well, youth check. I, I, I would flip it. I think Debo is more of the small forward because he's more versatile, right? Okay. And then Brennan Ayuk is more the traditional receiver, so he's a spot up. Shooter. I think Purdy's the point guard. No, no, no. The quarterback's not in the conversation. You, you, should, you build your five pass catchers with, you, you with the various a, roles. You would be a shooting, shoot first point guard. Hey, you? Brady, let me I ask was a you small this. Forward, so. <laughs> I was going to make a Hoosier joke, but it didn't come to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this, Jimmy Chipwood. Uh, let's talk about Rasheed Rice. Pick a fence. Okay. Because I want to ask you as a, as a quarterback, the progress he made yeah. coming in over the from the start of the season. Lee and I saw him at the Senior Bowl. Yep. I didn't love him. He wasn't creating the separation that we see now. He's gotten so much better. And when you're a quarterback, being able to rely on a rookie to be where you need him to be at this point seems pretty important. No, it's incredibly important. And, and even more so, like, look, working its man-to-man -man coverage, it's something that I think as you get in the NFL, you kind of it, it's not necessarily a learned trait. It's just understanding, like, the difference of how physical the DBs are going to be, how to work on your releases, how to use your hands, and getting a feel for the sense of timing. But they're not going to see a ton of that from San Francisco. Right. So really the next step of development and what's harder is understanding zone coverage and the windows within them. Yep. Usually it takes a while for wide receivers to say like, hey, out of this cut, I need to be aware of where the football because it's coming into this window. And if it's not, I got to extend to the next window right. and having a feel for that or understanding how to throttle down. They don't every wide receiver when they're young and they're fast, right? They, they, they run, they go to the combat, they run a 4 3 40. They want to show everyone how fast they are. The game's not always played like that. Yeah. Those windows sometimes you could run through when you're running too right. fast through it. And that's why a guy like Debo Samuels, who runs what a four five, yeah. high four five. Yes, that's right. But he's still a lot faster. Yeah. He plays. Well, he plays at that speed though. Yeah. But that speed works for finding those zone winners. His development and being having a better feel for zone coverage, I think, is what he's allowed this offense to excel throwing the football. And that's what he's going to face on Sunday versus San Francisco. All right, quickly. Well, by, by the way, just a third receiver in Andy Reid is a first year in Andy Reid's system to go over 750 yards. All right, give me a name. Yeah. You taking or the group? You taking San Francisco? Oh, San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's talk about these running backs here, and we're going to talk about navigating storms. <laughs> presented by America's Navy Reserve. All right. We mentioned Chris McCaffrey. <laughs> this is pretty simple, right? <laughs> <laughs>
This should be. I mean, this if, is if, like if, the quarterback if, if you conversation, the right? <laughs> like, this do the do the best. Chris McCaffrey and and you the best, and you said this, this should be. This should be faster than the quarterback conversation. Yeah. <laughs> DTR, DTR won Pacheco. Well, I also I wanted, I, I wanted to that. give him a nudge, like, <laughs> hey Chris man, McCaffrey. don't forget about C Mac. I almost said like C and C playing in this game. Player of the year. I think that's one of those things where he he couldn't get the wheels turning, which often happens to me, and he just went with. I get it. We put him on the spot. That's our fault. I mean, CMC, CMC was re- a more a more of a realistic candidate to win MVP than for Brock sure. Brady. He was. All right. He's going to win Offensive Player of the Year. He yeah. should. That was my lock of the year before the season. Was it really? Ooh, I like you that. got one right. Eleven to one. I got one right. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's good. That's good. It's been a long season. Ooh, it's been a long. Time. <laughs> it's been a long year. That's about as right one week though. You oh. did the impossible. Oh, 13. Oh, 13 against the spread is incredible. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know you about can it. Do that, or you can do that in 100 years if you tried. I know. <laughs> and, Ryan, and Ryan did it in 2024. Wow. Here, here's the, the most predictable thing about that. I didn't know anything about it because I don't pay attention to the picks. So I'm not an expert picker. I get a text from Pete Prisco laughing at me, and then he, he proceeded to tell me what happened. All right. Wow. Shout out to Christian McCaffrey for winning that. We're going to talk about tight ends now. Ooh. And this is where things get interesting. You know, Jay, I'll come to you first. Yeah. We talked about this on the Pick 6 podcast earlier in the week. I think the answer is obvious, but maybe we'll, we'll deliberate on it a little bit more. Travis Kelsey or George Kittle? Mm. You made a face. I didn't make a face. I lean towards Kelsey, right? But George Kittle, to me, is the most complete tight end in the NFL currently right now. But when you look at what Travis Kelsey has done in his career, right, number one in receptions in playoff history, right, number two in receiving yards in in playoff history. And we were talking about Rasheed Rice and understanding zone. I mean, no tight end does it better than Travis Kelsey. And, Brady, we talked about this. We just could not believe Baltimore allowed him free access in the AFC Championship game in the first half. Like, not getting your hands on him at the line of scrimmage is a death sentence, yep. right? I, I guarantee Steve Wilkes has been talking about this with his defense all week long. Even if it's run plays, just fester Travis Kelsey because for some reason in the playoffs, he just turns into another guy that Patrick Mahomes already has a great rapport with, but he seems unstoppable because I know people were saying Kyle Hamilton, you know, the Ravens got Kyle Hamilton. I think that pissed off Travis Kelsey because he's like, nobody's guarding me one-on-one. Right. And you could tell that he took it to heart. And even if they mugged him at the line, he'd probably just shake it off and uh, you know, go out there and, and catch the ball anyway. Too, so. <laughs> well, they don't, we don't start any bad blood, but no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, very good. Very good. Um, look, you're a mastermind of those things. Uh, yeah, I, I, let me ask you this, Brady. Would like realistically, obviously, they would say this if they were if they were answering at the podium. But don't do you think that Kyle Shanahan and Andy Reid would actually choose their respective tight ends over the other one because Ooh. of the system? It's a great question, really. Um, Maybe, but, you know, again, that's not really the reality we live in because I think Travis Kelsey could do a lot of the things Kittle does. Now, he's not going to maybe be able to block as well. Right. Yeah. That's but sort of, yeah. There might be some things he could do down the field in the passing game a little better. I mean, don't get me wrong. Kyle Shanahan would love Travis no, Kelsey. And, and yeah. I think this is a very, very close matchup between the two because yeah. of their differences. Yes. Right? Because if we are really looking at your traditional, you know, wide tight end, blocking tight end, you'd give the edge to Kelsey – or excuse me, to Kittle in yeah. the sense of yeah. his, his blocking ability. Uh, but as far as pass catching, and this is such a passing game, you have to give the edge to Kelsey. Yeah. I think the funny thing about how we keep talking about how he always gets open is I, I think, honestly, I don't know that Patrick Mahomes knows where he's going to be all the time. No, he oh, doesn't. No. Because I, I think, think he breaks style. off routes oh, and he yeah. says, I know he's going to be in a soft spot of the zone at some point, and I know I can look them off and just turn back and find him. Kel- yeah. Kelsey actually said on, on his podcast, New Heights, he was saying, he goes, you know, maybe I should like follow those lines that Big Red draws a little bit more often. Which t- tells you, like, that's it's crazy that Andy Reid gives him so much free Freedom. Freedom in this offensive system, and, but it works perfectly in concert with Mahomes. And it's yeah. why, I'm, if you're Steve Wilkes, you have to come out of your comfort zone of playing so much zone. Yeah. You got to put two guys on and mug him at the hey, last round. Too much because, zero though, because Kyle will call you out. <laughs> that, that's fine. <laughs> that happened earlier this year. I'm, I'm, my my whole thing is you have to find a way of disrupting him because if you play a man to man, he's probably going to beat whoever you're, he's matched up against. Yeah. So you got to almost put two guys on him the whole time, and then and ask Rishi Rice to beat you. Make Rishi yeah. Rice beat you. Make, why did you make not Isaiah Pacheco and then the running game beat you. For sure. If you okay. do that game plan, that's a winning game plan yep. for San Francisco. Well, yeah, I thought it was interesting last week, the Ravens, the second half. I know you said the Chiefs got a little bit more conservative, but they also got more physical with Kelsey at the line of scrimmage, even in zone, even zone blitzes, right? We saw Patrick Queen hit him, and then there was times, right? Get a little they chippy. Were, yeah, we saw that times when they were going zone, and they dropped Kyle Van Noy under him, and then they have a corner on top of him. So I think Steve Wilkes would look at that and maybe implement some of that and play a little bit more man coverage, which the 49ers actually did in the second half 
versus Detroit Lions. Now, Josh Reynolds had some it drops. Did, it, it, it didn't work yeah, out Yeah, Josh Reynolds had some drops, which saved him, but he did mix it up and play a little bit more man in the second half. It's by, by, the, by the way, the, the one thing that's sort of been undersold here is like, Four years ago, you know, you're talking about defensive coordinators. Yeah. I mean, Steve Wilkes is a great coach. People love him. But I, you do wonder if there's a bit of a drop-off there in terms of the defense. And, and now you're dealing with a Mahomes, a, the, like an evolved Mahomes. All right, that's a great segue because after the break, we're going to talk Elijah Duesbel's side of the ball. Mm. A little defense. Elijah, get warmed up. Oh, yeah. Pick 6 Podcast love here. It. Okay, well. Founds of the Lodge Hill. We'll be right back after this.